So, the internal uh, ear is having three parts that is vestibule, semicircular canal and cochlea. So, the internal ear is separated into two parts that is the membranous labyrinth and bony labyrinth. Membranous labyrinth and bony labyrinth. So, in membranous labyrinth, endolymph will be flowing. The fluid that is present in the membranous labyrinth is endolymph, and the fluid that is present in the bony labyrinth is perilymph. So, the structures that is the internal ear parts that is vestibule, semicircular canals and cochlea will be having both membranous labyrinth and bony labyrinth in it. So, the fluid that is present in the membranous labyrinth is endolymph and in the bony labyrinth it is perilymph. So, the vestibule is having two parts that is the anterior part called as sacculus and the posterior part called as utricles. Anterior part is called as sacculus and the posterior part is called as utricles. So, in this slide, sir, next slide. so here we can see this part is the vestibule this part is, is a vestibule. So, the anterior part is called as sacculus, this is the anterior part and this part is a utricle, the posterior part. And this from the vestibule, we can see there are three ring like structures, three semicircular structures which together form the semicircular canals. So, they are anterior semicircular canal, lateral semicircular canal and posterior semicircular canal which are right angled to each other. They are right angled to each other. So, there are three can structures semicircular canals present close to the vestibule and in the opposite part of the vestibule there is a spiral structure called as cochlea. Cochlea the shape of the cochlea is spiral in nature and it is it turns 2 by 2 3 by 4 turns which is a spiral structure and these I mean this cochlea will be connected it this part is connected to the the smallest bone called as stirrup. So, the stirrup that is the stapes will be opening will be connected at the upper window which is called as oval window and it will be transmitting the information the stimulus to the internal ear and this lower window is called as round window. And coming to the structure of cochlea, cochlea as discussed it is 3 spire 3 I mean it is 2 and 2 3 by 4 turns will be taken which is a spiral structure and it is separated into three chambers. Next slide. Sir. <coughs> it is separated into three chambers. So, here if you see this part, <coughs> this part is one turn. So, there are three chambers that are present. So, the upper chamber is called as scala vestibule the upper chamber called as scala vestibule and the middle chamber is called as scala media. The upper chamber called as scala vestibule, the middle chamber called as scala media and the lower chamber is called as scala tympani. So, there are three chambers, upper chamber of the spiral is called as scala vestibule, 
the middle chamber called as scala tympani and the lowermost chamber scala uppermost chamber scala vestibule middle chamber scala media and the lowermost chamber is scala tympani so these chambers are formed due to the uh, membrane that is present so the membrane that is separating scala vestibule and scala media is vestibular membrane so here if you see the membrane that is separating is called as vestibular membrane so vestibular membrane is a membrane which separates scala vestibule and scala media and the second membrane which separates the scala media and scala tympani is called as tympanic membrane so this membrane is called as tympanic membrane so between these two scala vestibule and scala media the membrane that is present is vestibular membrane and the membrane that is present between scala media and scala tympani is tympanic membrane so due to the presence of two membranes the cochlea is having three layers three chambers so between these chambers between the scala vestibule and scala tympani between scala vestibule and scala media the perilymph will be flowing and between the scala media and scala tympani the perilymph will be flowing then where is the endolymph flowing so this scala media is internally separated by one more membrane here if you can see it is having a membrane which will be for where the endolymph will be flowing so in this chamber perilymph will be flowing and in the lower chamber the perilymph will be flowing but bit in the scala media the fluid that is being flowed is the endolymph so that is why as it is made up of membrane we call it as membranous labyrinth but whereas these two chambers are surrounded by a bony structure called as bony labyrinth and coming to the mechanism how we are able to hear is so there is a structure called as organ of cotti so if you recollect the upper chamber of the cochlea scala vestibule and the membrane that is present is vestibular membrane and the lower chamber is called as scala tympani and the membrane that is separating the middle chamber and the lower chamber is basilar membrane that is vestibular membrane and the membrane that is present the chamber that is present in between is called as scala media which contains the the hearing part hearing cells that is the sensory cells called as organ of cotti so organ of cotti is a structure organ of cotti is a structure which helps in converting the auditory impulses to chemical impulses so the sound waves sound impulses are being converted into the chemical impulse by i mean through electrical impulse with the help of organ of cotti so this organ of cotti is help play a very important role in hearing so as cochlea contains organ of cotti we say it as here the uh, sensory part of the ear is cochlea and so the nerves so there are three nerves that are uh, two nerves that are coming from the internal ear so the vestibule and semicircular canal together they will be uh, giving out a nerve called as vestibular 
nerve. The nerve that comes from vestibule and semicircular canal is called as vestibular nerve which is sensory nerve and the nerve coming from cochlea is called as cochlea nerve. The nerve coming from cochlea is called as cochlea nerve. So, together the vestibular nerve and cochlea nerve together called as auditory nerve. So, auditory nerve is nothing but the nerve that is coming carrying impulses from the ear to the brain. So, auditory nerve comprises two nerves that is cochlea nerve which comes from the cochlea and vestibular nerve which comes from both vestibule and semicircular canals. So, if we see the mechanism that is involved how the impulse or how the sound waves are being transferred or is being carrying the impulse from the outer atmosphere from the outside to the ear which will be further sensed by the brain is first the sound will be entering into the ear through the pinna, the flap like structure called as ear pinna and from the ear pinna it goes into the next canal like structure called as external auditory meatus. So, from the external auditory meatus it, it vibrates the tympanum, the sound vibrates the tympanic membrane. So, from the tympanic membrane the impulses are carried to the ear ossicles that is first one is malus, next incus and then steps. So, these three parts are external ear and these three parts are the ear ossicles called as middle ear and from the steps the impulses are carried through round owl window from owl window it gets transmitted to the cochlea. So, the cochlea as the fluid that is present in the cochlea moves it creates the impulse it generates the impulse. So, the fluid that is present in these chambers as they are moving if you can see the hair like structures that are present here will be creating an impulse the as the hair like structures also move which generates the impulse in the sensory cells that is auditory cells. So, these auditory cells will be generating the electrical impulse and which will be carried to the brain through organ of corti. So, from the organ of corti which is present in the cochlea the impulses are carried to the brain through the nerve called as cochlea nerve. And as it joins with the, the other two structures that is vestibular, vestib vestibule and semicircular uh, structures the nerve coming from these two it will be forming auditory nerve. So, auditory nerve is formed by the union of cochlear nerve and the next one is the vestibular nerve. So, they will be transmitting the information to the brain where we can respond response is generated by the nerves called as motor nerves. So, this is a mechanism that is taking place in the ear and most of us have a habit of like some will be piercing or some will be having a habit of keeping sharp objects into the ear. 
So, why we should not keep this sharp objects in the ear is it will be tearing the tympanic membrane. So, the tympanic membrane which is very thin membrane which acts as an amplifier if it is stayed or if it is ruptured the sound cannot be transmitted and it may lead to uh, deafness. So, the person might become deaf if sharp objects are kept in the ear due to the rupture of tympanic membrane and along with that some also like have a habit of pouring warm oils, hot oils or few uh, uh, leafy uh, juices, plant juices into the ear. So, this may also affect the, the ear and it might lead to complete deafness. So, these kind of structures should not be, these kind of things should not be encouraged.